Well, hi guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to Spare Room. Friday night, not much happening here. I look like I'm working all weekend, so I thought I'd probably get this video out sort of before the weekend and maybe get some, some editing done and stuff and get it uploaded. This is a new tool project and you might be a little bit interested in following along. Anyone who's followed my Facebook or my Instagram in the last few months will know what I'm sort of doing. But we've got some part, uh, we've got some some patterns to to make some castings, and I thought I'd make a video and sort of give you a bit of an idea of how it works or or how it's meant to work and what it is and some background on it. Uh, the reason I bought the Lorch lathe 10, 6 years ago, 7 years ago, 8 years ago, something like that and restored it is because it's a, a very versatile and modular thing um, all the bits uncramp and unbolt and bolt on and you can strip it down into bits and put it back together and you don't lose any accuracy. It's a pretty good machine like that. I've become... I've fallen in love with tool making to a certain extent and there are other projects that we're still doing and that's cool but tool making is pretty pretty interesting thing and people seem to be interested in it so this is a, it's an accessory for the lathe. I I was given this book. Uh, this book recently. I've got two copies and they're all both exactly the same. One's an Australian one and one's an English one. They've got the same gentleman in his dust coat and shiny shoes and necktie and brill cream etc. on the front. And it's called The Simple Lathe and its Accessories, fully illustrated. It's not a bad book. It's old, and this one, I believe, if we have a look, um, is 1939. This one, just as a matter of interest, is the same edition, February 1939. Anyway... I did a bit of a trade, and this goes back to the summer bash where I bought a a tool post grinder, which I thought would be good for this lathe, and it's really it's a little bit too big for my machine. And I asked around my friends and around YouTube to see who would like it, and a gentleman just up the up the hill, oh, well, a little way away, but in this state, Cameron Lowe, thanks, said, hey, look. I'd be interested in what you want for it. And I said, well, what do you got to swap? He was moving house and he had a, a stack of books and I've already showed them. So this book was in amongst them. When I had a look on the, book, well, on the bookshelf, I already had one. So that's pretty cool. But I needed the refresher probably because this project's in here. And there's a lot of cool stuff in this book. But if we have a look under here under chucks and angle plates... There's a drawing, figure 52 and 53. It says elevations and sections of a chuck for oval and met for oval metal turning. Or an ellipse chuck. That's a fairly interesting thing. And it's a fairly sketchy sort of a drawing. Um, you've got to sort of guesstimate some of it, how it all goes together. But there's a side view or a section view and then there's a sort of a that's kind of a section view too um, looking at across here and then there's a top view and there's a front view a face view face view of chuck for oval metal turning so I cut this up or I, I messed around in in on shape for a while and sort of come up with a bit more of understanding of how it works and, and what's involved in it and I thought, well, I'll make some patterns and see if I can sort of work out how it works. But certain people have encouraged me to build this, and I really appreciate 
anyone who stepped up and said, hey, look, this can be done. I don't know if it's going to work, but I've scaled this to fit my lathe spindle, so it's not very big. And this is what I've ended up with. I've got a, a pattern here to make cast iron casting. Um, this is the parting line here. I don't know if this is really probably ideal. Maybe I can put them on a match plate and put a fillet around there so you get a nice round corner rather than somewhere that's going to get undercut and shrinkage. But it's parted there. Someone might have a better idea than me what needs to be done. This is all shaped here and there's four Gibbs screws in here and a couple of Gibbs run. This has got to be machined out square. And there's a couple of Gibbs run in here. This part here when this is machined up, it slides backwards and forwards. This goes on the spindle, it's drilled and, and threaded. I'm sharing board and threaded out here and that goes on the spindle. This one here is a spindle for the chuck. So the reality is you've only got probably here, between here and here, there's probably two inches further stick out when it's all together. So it's not a not a particularly cumbersome little attachment. This one I was going to make in bronze and two gibbs here to slide it together and they're fastened with four bolts to hold it on. But they've got to be adjusted from each end so you get centre. So it's an interesting little inter sort of an interesting um, exercise to get that to work. It's got holes in here to put a Tommy bar in to take it off the lathe and I've got this one here which will also be an iron casting which is the cam this has got or there will be a couple of thumb screws in here and this goes each side of the the spindle you can't really have a look at it on there because it needs a hole boring in here for the spindle but um, that's going to go over the spindle with a cam and it's adjustable offset so this ring which will be bored out to fit that as a nice running fit and then parted into two pieces is what follows on the cam if we have a look that that'll go pretty much in between there and there and if that makes sense that goes over the cam which moves backwards and forwards this way and up and down and it's got to have iron or steel brackets probably that this slides on this way and fasten to this so that when this moves around this goes backwards and forwards is the, is the theory so that's sort of how it works. I don't know if I've explained that particularly well, but I know looking at pictures on Instagram, people were struggling a bit with it, and I am too. But as this turns, as this moves around on this cam, up and down, backwards and forwards, two slides on here with it, with an angle piece that that fit into a groove on the back of this piece will make this move up and down as it turns. So that's the idea is that it moves half a turn out this way and half a turn out this way. So as it comes around it'll turn an oval so it's narrower on the sides than, than on the, the long ways. That's the idea. Um, don't know if it's going to work. I've made a pattern there for the some bronze pieces to go in here just to give them a bit more meat for the thumb screws um, and that'll match the rest of the bronze casting so that's why I've done it like that rather than just buy a piece of bar stock that's a very basic split pattern as is this it's the parting line there and afterwards we'll bore a slotted or an oval shaped hole in here so there's some adjustment this won't give a lot of of offset. I think if I've done my maths right, it'll be about 12, 14 millimeters, which is probably enough for well anything up to 
probably 40 millimeters diameter which is about the maximum that I'm going to be turning on this so I don't even think I'm going to be spinning that much but we'll try it and see so this is the main face plate there's holes in here and there's holes in here and holes to hold this in place This has got to have holes for a couple of studs for the, the two levers that go on the back. And this will slide on those levers backwards and forwards this way. And be fixed this way, so it can't move this way. But when it moves, when the cam moves this way, this slide here will do the work. And when it moves this way, these two slides on here will do the work. So that's kind of how it works. Bit complicated. Ask some questions. Um, it will all sort of... You will sort of understand it as it comes to pass. I've just done some, some very basic drawings to make patterns. Um, this shows the, the oval hole here that goes over the actual over the spindle and the two holes in the side here which are actually to to move it backwards and forwards this shows the groove in the back for the or the, the groove in the back here for the um, for the brackets that hold the or the slide brackets that, that hold this in place and this will probably be quite a bit bit thinner and quite a bit less meaty and it will be parted into two places. The two pieces are held together with springs on the on the on the outside slides or spring steel and, and rods. So that's all fairly complex comp it's all fairly compact. So it's quite a nice design for book that was first published in 1915 it's it's really quite a nice neat design I think and it's probably a better design than than I've seen anywhere else I just thought it'd be an interesting thing to make most people are asking the question why do you need an ellipse turning attachment and the reason is that nobody needs an ellipse turning attachment because if it was something that was useful and something that everyone used you'd be able to buy one um, off the shelf and I don't think that's possible so really to be honest I can if I'm pressed to think of a use um, probably flanges for steam fittings things like that but to be honest there isn't really a use for it it's just a fun accessory and I've come to the conclusion that if I'm making things I used to make things that are useful. I can buy things that are useful. Um, and make something that no one else has got and something that's going to be a learning curve. And it will be. It'll be scraping and machining, fitting dovetails, um, threading, turning, milling, um, some faceplate work. Um, and some some fairly interesting operations. That's why I've decided to do it, not because I have a, a project lined up for it or something that that I can use it for. And I'm not even sure if it's going to work, but it's going to be interesting episode or interesting few videos getting it to work. The other thing that we probably need to talk about is the time frame on this. These are being cast in iron, and the guy who's offered to do these for me, this one and this one are iron. The guys that have offered to do this for me really have an extended sort of a time period to do it in. So I'm not really expecting any of these castings back and together enough much before Christmas. It's six weeks, seven weeks away. Um, so don't expect another update or a video on this uh, much before then. It might happen, but I don't think it will. Um then we've got the rest of the year next year so eventually it might happen and when I've got all the bits well it'll happen a bit quicker 
But um, I just thought this was a cool thing to make and I thought I'd share the patterns with you before I send them away to get cast. And I'm going to say thanks for watching and more soon. Big thanks to all my new subscribers. I hope this interests some of you and I hope it interests the guys that have been watching all along. I really appreciate your feedback and the community and interacting with you on a, on a weekly basis and I'll continue to do this but there'll be other projects as well as we go through but this is a new thing that is about ready to take to the next stage so thanks for watching be kind to each other and more soon guys and girls